Welcome back, everybody. Welcome to episode two of the Solid Rock podcast. Today, it's your host, uh, Tunji, and I'm joined by my co-host here, Chad. Can you please introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Uh, glad to be back. I'm really excited for today's podcast. Um, can't wait to hear what God has in store for us. Okay. So, today was a very, very interesting sermon. We learned a lot um, about... Uh, we learned from a pastor today that came from a completely different country. He was from India. And he came and gave us a sermon about life in India. He has a ministry out there with over 700 people. It's such a beautiful thing that he's doing all this work for God. And in this place, the service that he gave and his character is truly a character of somebody that has seen a lot in his life and has gone through a lot too. Unimpeachable character is what I'd like to um, describe him as. Because just from the little that I've seen, he truly has joy. Did you see the joy he had speaking about God and what God has done for him in his life? The joy. You don't get joy like that in, in many things. Happiness is a fleeting emotion, but you can have joy regard, irris, irrespective of the circumstances that you go through. And this man had real joy, and you could see that in him today. Pastor Emmanuel Gor, Gorel. Gola. Oh, Gola. My mistake. Yeah, yeah. My mistake. Um, what do you think of today's service? You know, I think today's sermon was... No, service, because I think it was a full ministration. Uh, it was not just um, a man reading scriptures, but it was a man speaking out of experience and speaking out of um, his own walk and encounters with God. And that's why um, you could sense the emotion behind it. Like you said, you could sense the joy and the gratitude and the gratefulness that he had toward God. And I could sense the same thing, and it was infectious throughout the room um, and I, I believe it's because of that it was not just a bible reading it was not just obligatory but it was a man speaking out of experience and even that joy like the bible says that the joy of the lord is our strength i feel like the joy that he had was not of of his own doing was not of anything was not of his father's success but it was mainly the joy of the Lord. And I feel like that is what uh, strengthened his message so much that as he communicated what it is God had done in his life, uh, many people were able to resonate because they were getting in touch with the spirit behind the message. And I think it was amazing. Um, the, the points that he touched on, I feel like everyone was able to connect and maybe... Um, uh, throughout the, the the span of this podcast, we'll be able to touch on a few things and just reflect and see how they relate to us and what they meant to us and what takeaways we had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, before we jump straight into it, we just came back from the Solid Rock Retreat. Mm -hmm. And that was a f uh, three day, or four day, three night. Yeah. Four day, three night retreat that was down in Glen um house in County Tipperary. And that was a very, very, very eye-opening experience for me because that was my first um, real retreat. I went to one when I was younger, but I wasn't really in the same uh, frame of mind as I am now. Mm -hmm. And all I can say is that truly for those that were there, you know, if you know, you know. Mm -hmm. I really wish we could put into words what went down at this retreat, but I don't think words can really describe it. But if I could attach a word to it, it would have to be eye-opening. Uh. My eyes were opened at this retreat, and I seen things that i never seen before and heard things I could never hear before uh. within my own personal life. And it was a real day of receiving 
what God had for us. Mm. Um, while we were there, we went from a Thursday to the Sunday morning. And it was a very... I, w- I, I only showed up on the Friday, so I can't speak about how things were on the Thursday or the Friday. Because mm-hmm. I came Friday night, evening. Um, but what I can definitely say from the two days or so that I was there, it was eye-opening. The amount of young people that are there, that have fuel and fire for God, we really set that place ablaze, mm-hmm. as I said before. It was really set ablaze. Mm-hmm. You know, that's different from just the regular fire. A blaze is more like forest fire, mm-hmm. you know. We really set that place ablaze. Within the spirits of everybody, there was... It was just an eye-opening experience, seeing everybody pour out their hearts, speaking in the spirit. Mm-hmm. You know, it felt like we weren't even in this world. It felt like an out-of-body experience, mm-hmm. um, and that's that's all I can say for that. Mm. I think next year, if you haven't gone this year, there will be another next year. Be ready, because next year will be even bigger and better than it was this year. Mm. Mm. What's your take? Oh, I agree. I think the Solid Rock retreat was. Um, really hard to quantify because I think the the diversity in the experiences that people had was just immense. I feel like everyone came out of that place with a new understanding and a new revelation, either of who they are or who they are in God, of who God or of who God is. I spoke with so many people who had, you know, touched something that they previously maybe had not imagined and I can still feel the effect of that time that we spent before the Lord but I have to say the thing that took me aback was just the raw hunger and thirst that the young people had for God and the response that the Spirit of God had towards that hunger you know how the Bible says that every hungry mouth I will feel I feel like the young adults retreat was a place where the passion of God to to spark and to ignite a generation was met with the the right hunger, the right desire. And I could just see it every time we went into prayer, every time we broke into worship, the Spirit of God moved so easily and without any restraint. And I really feel like everyone was no 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 one was left untouched even the people who maybe came with a different expectation i feel like the fact that they were in that company the spirit of god moved over them as well and something changed so i feel like it was such an eye opening experience like you said such a breath breath of fresh air um in today's world just that raw hunger it went beyond emotion it Mm. went beyond intellect it went beyond decorum it was a time to be open honest intimate with god in a way that i'd say not many people had experienced until that point but what makes me glad is that 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 was just the beginning i feel like there are more moments like this that are coming and it's only going to get higher and deeper and more profound mm. as we continue in what God poured out for us or on, on us during that retreat. Well, wow, that was great. So, to go into today's topic, what was spoken about was a, it seemed like it was sort of a parable. That's what the beginning came across as. Pastor Manuel um, spoke. I almost thought that he was given a parable to try and let us know what the deeper meaning was behind the story. And as he was going along on that parable, but before he went to the parable, he gave us a spoken word, which was John fifteen sixteen. if you want to read that for us. Chad. Yeah, let's uh, let's get that. John fifteen sixteen, and he says, "These are the words of Jesus." He says, "You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you 
that you should go and you should bear fruit and that your fruit should remain for whatever you ask the father in my name he may give to you yeah mm. so you didn't choose me but i chose and appointed you and as he was t- describing the story it started off as a in 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 terms of there was a drunk man and it was just a regular uh, woman um dirt poor mm-hmm. as he was describing mm-hmm. you know working in the slums of mumbai mm-hmm. in those slums he couldn't do anything really but you know consume himself in alcohol mm-hmm. tried to have children first child died second child tried again also died mm-hmm. for some reason it didn't seem like you know conceiving was even possible mm-hmm. um at first glance mm-hmm. and it was very peculiar and then after the third mm-hmm. the woman somebody said to the woman give your life to god mm-hmm. and he will sort out your issues i'm mm-hmm. paraphrasing here mm-hmm. it wasn't exactly said like that but mm-hmm. something on, on those lines and she gave her life over mm-hmm. in just this case mm-hmm. um and this is uh, it reminded me of when jesus told us that parable of those who set their Mm-hmm. um beliefs or their faith on solid ground mm-hmm. that of a rock than that of sand mm-hmm. you know this was a li- it was literally happening mm-hmm. in this parable the pastor was giving mm-hmm. this woman's faith was planted on sand mm-hmm. it wasn't on solid ground mm-hmm. so when she planted this house on the sand mm-hmm. she was given a child mm-hmm. but as soon as that happened her faith Mm-hmm. went out the window. Mm-hmm. Let's just say a downpour of rain came mm-hmm. and the sand dispersed. Mm-hmm. And the child also dispersed mm-hmm. along with her fate. Mm-hmm. And as time went on again somebody came to her, another messenger of God came to her and said, "Give your life over to Christ. Mm-hmm. Come to church mm-hmm. and he will solve your problems." Mm-hmm. So the woman believed. Mhm. In this case, mm-hmm. she believed and came to the church. Mhm. And after her husband found out, mm-hmm. she was at the church. She was drunk as drunkards do. Mhm. And he came to the church and physically dragged her out. Mhm. By the hair, dragged her out of the church in mm-hmm. front of everybody. Mhm. And the pastor in that church mm-hmm. was very um confused mm-hmm. as to you know how this can be happening and you know what can he actually do mm-hmm. to help you know if you see something like that mm-hmm. what can somebody actually do mm-hmm. he screamed at her and said why are you going to church mm-hmm. can't you see that the, a god doesn't exist mm-hmm. a god does not exist mm-hmm. I'm paraphrasing again, but the pastor said, "Give your life to Christ." No, let me go before that. He said, "If God was real, we would not have lost mm-hmm. all of our children. Mm-hmm. We would not have lost all of our children in this case." Mm-hmm. And then the pastor said, "Give your life to Christ, mm-hmm. and He will make all things good." Mm-hmm. And he said. My wife is pregnant right now with our fourth child. Mm-hmm. If this child is born, I will accept your Jesus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Lo and behold, the fourth child was born. Mm-hmm. And that fourth child was the pastor Emmanuel mm-hmm. that spoke with us today mm-hmm. from Mumbai, India. Mm-hmm. He was the fourth child that was born. to that family. Mhm. Mm. Do you see how God works? Wow. Wow. What do you think about that? I think that's a very good summary that you've made of the story. 
um, I didn't see the connection, but n- later when he concluded, I was able to really appreciate that this is actually the man's life story. Yeah. It's not just a... It's not a parable. Yeah, it wasn't a random story that, you know, um, he was telling this is his own life story. Yes. And so more than just a message, he was sharing his own personal experience. Wow. But even as we're getting into that, because there are certain things that stood out for me in the scripture that he quoted, and I'd like us to maybe get into that for a second, to see how that Jesus said that you did not choose me, but I chose you. And I'm beginning to wonder what is what what did he mean and why did he think it necessary to tell you that you did not choose him and that he chose you. Hmm. The first thing that comes to my mind is when we're told that before you were born, Mm -hmm. I knew you. Mm -hmm. Before you were born, I knew you. So that would mean that before we were in existence, Mm -hmm. God knew us Mm -hmm. and he knew what we would do. Mm -hmm. He knew what we'd be like. He would know ultimately our conception and our end. Mm -hmm. He knows how we're coming and how we're going. Mm -hmm. So he chose us. I think there's a statistic, not statistic, there's a a saying out there to say that there's a one in 400 trillion chance that you'll be born as a human being. Really? A 400 trillion chance you'll be born as a human being. Mm -hmm. So going off that principle, we were chosen Mm -hmm. to be here. Mm -hmm. Nobody, there's no such thing as a child that was born that was a mistake. Mm Mm-hmm. Because God doesn't make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Before you were born, I knew you. Mm -hmm. So we've been here before we were even here. Mm -hmm. God set the path Mm -hmm. before we even left his side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And I think that going from that principle... What we're doing right now has already been pre-set. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We're running on our factory settings. Mm-hmm. We haven't been calibrated yet. Mm-hmm. So we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, I think that's, that's kind of my way of seeing mm-hmm. that we did not choose him. He chose us. Mm-hmm. He, we, we became ripe plantain, mm-hmm. as I'd like mm-hmm. to say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You mm-hmm. know, we were green plantain before, mm-hmm. but he waited for us to ripen mm-hmm. before he set us on our journeys mm-hmm. to be where we are today. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. I like that. I like that. That before we were born, he knew us. And Jesus says to the disciples, you did not choose me. I chose you. Mm. Personally, I believe that implies that sometimes when we cl- when we look at our lives and we maybe think to the time that we got born again, sometimes we consider that we took that decision ourselves. Mm. And maybe you got to a point and said, you know, I'm tired of living this life. I'm going to make the decision to accept Christ now. And so from then on, you can be tempted to think that you got fed up with your old life and therefore made a decision to approach God. But Jesus now here in an unexpected power play tells the disciples that I know you followed me. I know you're walking with me. I know you can go back maybe if you think I know you can betray me like some of them did. Mm -hmm. I know you can deny me like some of them did. 
But the fact of the matter is you're not the one who made the decision to follow me. I made that decision on your behalf and at the right time things worked to align with my decision that you would follow me. So even whatever circumstances you feel, you feel pushed you to Christ, the ultimate decision was not yours to take. Mm -hmm. He had made up his mind on you, Tunji, that you would come to know him in your existence on this earth. And what that does to you, what that information does to you, is that first it humbles you to make you realize that even the most important decision that you have made in your life, you could still not have done it except by the intervention of the Almighty mm. or the decision of the Almighty. If, if it had not been in his mind for you to know him, then you would still be wandering about seeking for truth and never finding it. But he decided for you before he sent you here. And so mm -hmm. he's telling the disciples, listen, don't get it twisted. I know you, you believe and physically you are following me because you probably wake up every morning and you make a decision to pray. But I'm trying to tell you there is something bigger than your own will that is motivating, that is driving you toward me. And that's why he told them, I did not choose you. Oh no, you did not choose me. I chose you. And the second thing that does, other than humbling you, it makes you realize that there is really nothing you can do in and of yourself except by God. So no one has the right or power to be self-righteous because even their decision to follow God still ties to God deciding that that person or you should follow him. So I think it's really interesting when we get into the choosing and election of God that even the criteria that the Bible prescribes for us that God uses, it's methodol. It's, it, 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 he follows a certain pattern. Mm. He just doesn't choose anything and anyone. So it is a privilege for you to be in his camp because he's chosen you. But that also means that you have met a certain criteria of people that he wants in his family. Mm. Maybe if you could just let me know what you think about that before we get into the kind of people God chooses. Because he says, I did not choose, you did not choose me, but I chose you. Mm. And we know specifically, he chose those disciples. He didn't choose everyone. He mm -hmm. chose them. What criteria, or that's the question we're going to answer, but what do you think about what we've spoken? Okay. So, the criteria is such a vast, um, it's such a vast thing because the first t person that comes to my mind is um, Apostle Paul, mm -hmm. you know, once known as um, Saul. Mm -hmm. And the type of person that he was before he was chosen to be one of the 12 disciples, he was the type that hated Christians. He hated Christians. Imagine being a Christian in those times and your brother was a Christian just like you but he was killed for that by, and and the person that approved it was one of the Jewish leaders, mm -hmm. Saul. Mm -hmm. You later see that he's now converted into the same religion mm -hmm. that got your brother killed and he mm -hmm. approved of it then. Mm -hmm. Your brother is never coming back and now we all need to look to this man and take his teachings? Mm -hmm. Wow, stumbling block. Imagine what that would do to somebody's faith. Mm. If that was someone that was close to you, mm. you know, and to follow somebody like that, it just goes to show you that God's criteria can never be comprehended by mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. Our emotions, mm -hmm. we can't comprehend it mm -hmm. right now. If that was my brother and I was in that position, mm -hmm. how could I follow somebody like that? 
you know how difficult that would be? Because we have this attachment mm. to mm. things. Mm. So the criteria in my mind can't be comprehended by man. Mm. And even now I'm still trying to figure like how does God pick certain types of people? Mm. You know, mm. Cain and Abel, mm. the the prodigal son. Mm -hmm. That's another example. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many different examples that God was picking on paper the lesser mm. of the two. Mm -hmm. But he would always pick the less. But then it goes to show you, those who lessen themselves mm -hmm. have more authority mm -hmm. than those that uplift themselves. Uplift themselves yeah. mm -hmm. You know, that's a common theme that I've seen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And maybe the people that God has chosen mm -hmm. have that humility, mm -hmm. have that humble spirit. Because God knows our spirit. A lot of people don't know their spirit mm -hmm. and the type of spirit that they have. Mm -hmm. You know, their attitude, mm -hmm. their soul could have a very grandiose, mm -hmm. you know, ego. Mm -hmm. But that's your soul, not your spirit. Mm -hmm. They're different things. We need to differentiate those. Mm -hmm. Your soul can be one way, but your spirit could be another. Mm -hmm. And your spirit could be a silenced in that time. Mm -hmm. Because the soul is connected to the physical body, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So the physical body, just imagine if, for example, we live in the slums. Mm -hmm. Our upbringing was very rough. Mm -hmm. You had to be, you know, you had to do certain things in order to get by. You had to steal, maybe even kill. Mm -hmm. Your spirit is not going to be speaking to you, mm -hmm. you know. But eventually, a day will come a day that your spirit will overpower the sound of your soul. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's people like that. Mm -hmm. they get chosen mm. wow wow because for me mm -hmm. i wasn't a good kid mm -hmm. i used to be a lot of different things i used to be a bully mm -hmm. i used to be a troublemaker mm -hmm. i used to steal mm -hmm. i used to you know i used to be very promiscuous mm -hmm. i used to be all of those things as when i when i grew up mm -hmm. you know i used to uh, cause trouble for people i used to give my mom a hard time you know and Although I'm only 22, I've gone through a lot mm -hmm. in those couple of years before I was born again. Mm -hmm. But now it's a thing of, although parents then used to say, stay away from Tunji, mm -hmm. you know, it's because of him you're failing. It's because of him you're doing all of these things. It's easier for them to attach mm -hmm. something onto because they don't know why. It's the best thing that they can do is blame and point mm -hmm. at someone. But they didn't know that God had other plans for me. Mm -hmm. Because where I am now is miles ahead where all of their own kids are mm -hmm. at this stage. Mm -hmm. Now they're saying you should be more like Tunji. Mm -hmm. But that's but that's where the change is. Mm -hmm. Because I think my spirit overtook my soul mm -hmm. and realized that you know, this worldly stuff doesn't mean or do anything for me. Mm -hmm. But giving my life over mm -hmm. and putting myself down mm -hmm. in order to put God above, mm -hmm. maybe put that in me, put me in the position that I'm in today. Mm. Hmm. Yeah. Oh. You said something interesting about the soul and the spirit and the fact that the time that your spirit is strong enough to speak beyond the voices of the soul and the flesh then you are more godly in the sense that the bible tells us that um to be led of the spirit that we may not gratify the desires of the flesh that means the one way to be or one of the ways to be godly is for you to allow your soul to be the one no your spirit to be the one giving direction mm. right and I think, well, that is the main difference between a believer and an unbeliever because a believer is a person who has had their soul or their spirits awakened to the truth that God is the Father and the only way to the Father is through Jesus Christ, right? But anyone outside that bracket tends to live a life that is led after the soul. So mm. your desires, your emotions are your first point of, uh, of reference. 
okay when you're even if you're trying to check within yourself there is no answers you'll get mm. because there is no spirit inside you that is connected with god yes okay that's a good point you brought but i'm gonna take us back to that point of calling and you drew a very interesting picture when you started to mention biblical figures and you've said that you noticed that it's almost as if god chooses the lesser mm. okay and you said um with uh with abel um with Abel and Cain, and you said with um, who else did you mention? Uh, you mentioned prodigal son. The prodigal son, um, yeah, because there are two brothers as well. I, even if you look at um, Jacob, Jacob and Esau. Mm. Even if you look at uh, the the twelve sons of of, uh, Israel. of Israel, you have Joseph. Even Ephraim and Manasseh. You mm. know, the, it was always the lesser. Yeah. If you if you look at the story of Gideon, okay, um, all these stories depict men of weakness in one regard moses he could he was a stutterer um all these stories depict men and women who had some kind of weakness and dysfunction yet we see god choose them but not only that he uses them okay so jesus comes and tells the disciples i did not choose you and even if you look at the disciples the people he chose were they were not the best. Mm. Peter was very, very unwa he was very, very wavering. Like he was he was he was not a very decisive person. Mm -hmm. He was there, he was not there. Mm. We 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 saw pe Peter people like Judas, untrustworthy, mm -hmm. you know, people who are not honest. But you cannot tell me that Jesus did not know mm. what the end is. He knew very well the kind of people that he was inviting to walk with. And this is similar to us. The, the kind of people that God invites into relationship with him are not the most deserving. Mm -hmm. They are not the most upright. Mm -hmm. You know, believers, sometimes if you look at where we came from, like you said in your story, we, didn't, we were not the most morally uh, reputable people mm -hmm. around. Yet... Even in those weaknesses, he say, listen, you did not choose me. I chose you. And this is true because you know in the mind that you had then, you could never have made the decision to follow Christ, mm. knowing who you are. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Because we were so stuck in our ways. We were so stuck in our view of life that we could not accept anything else. Hard of heart. But then... Jesus still says, you did not choose me. You who is weak in one way or another, you who is imperfect, okay, you who is not anyone's role model yet. God says, I chose you. You did not choose me. Mm. You thought that because of your weakness and that because you are hit rock bottom, you now, you know, a light went off in your head and you thought, ah, now let me follow Christ. Mm. But even then he's telling me, listen, you could not have known to follow me except that I made that decision mm. that you could follow me mm. and now you are able to. But back to the criteria bit of it. The criteria of God seems very clear now that God does not pick the things that look a certain way. He does not pick the things that are shiny, okay, he does not pick the things that already have a good reputation. Mm. He he starts from the ground up. Mm -hmm. Let's let's re let's read a scripture here and see if we can quantify this criteria of God by scripture. Is it actually true that there is a way and a pattern that God chooses things? We are taking examples, but there, is it is it biblical? Mm. Are we imagining? Is yeah. it false doctrine? Let's see. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26, and he says, For you see your calling, brethren, that not many were wise according to the flesh, and not many mighty, not many noble are called. So uh, the Paul is saying in the scripture, For you see your calling. You see where you're from, Tunji. Mm -hmm. I see where I'm from. And he says, That not many were wise according to the flesh, that even in those days, forget the believers, even the unbelievers around you would not look and say, oh, you know, that's a wise man. 
Because in this world, there are people who are wise, even though they don't know Christ, mm-hmm. right? They have a, a, a worldly wisdom. Yes. We admire them. We yes. listen to Bill Gates and we're like, mm, this guy is deep. Mm-hmm. You know, we listen to people who have opinions that matter. Okay. So according to the flesh, they are wise. Mm-hmm. Okay. But maybe for one reason or another, God still did not choose them. Mm. Right. And, and he's telling you that. For if you remember your calling, brethren, if you see your calling, not many were wise according to the flesh. I know I wasn't wise according to the flesh. I wasn't the people that people come to for answers mm. according to the flesh back then. I wasn't the, the kind of person that someone would seek advice from mm-hmm. or even someone would want to have a conversation with mm. according to the flesh. And he says not many were mighty. Not many of the people who have been chosen by Christ maybe come from you know, families that, that have power, mm. right? It says not many are noble. Not everyone who came to Christ comes from a royal family mm. or some kind of line of kings, okay? Mm. But then in verse 27, he says, But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring the things which are. Ha. Now, we're talking about the man who came today mm-hmm. and the background of his story. Yes. And where he came from. He did not come from a noble family. No. He did not come from a place of great repute. No. He did not even come from a place where we could say that, oh, these guys are intellectuals because you think oh, m- many Indians are smart. Yes. Because he, he said that his parents couldn't read or write. Mm. So the foolish things. Because I perceive that God does this. And maybe we're going to read that and see. So that there would be no reason for you, Tunji, to boast in what God has done for you and say, oh, I was able to turn my life around. Mm. Because the truth is, you were not able to turn your life around. You were not able to choose him. It is him who chose you that Mm. empowered you to turn your life around. Mm. Do you understand what I mean? It's a bit like uh, intertwined, but it's in there somewhere that It's the fact that God desired so much and loved you so much to make himself known to you. And it's that knowledge of God working in you that is changing things. Yeah. But except he had made that decision, we have no, we are no better than the rest. Mm. And I'm not saying that God has not chosen them. It could be that they have not accepted to be chosen because Mm. those are two things. God can call you, right? But it's another thing to accept the call. Mm. But before we go deeper, I want you to chime in and tell me what you what you're thinking. So that was very interesting to say that people are chosen not from what they have, but the things that humans would deem foolish. Mm-hmm. Those are the things that God will make the wise of the world. Mm-hmm them seem even more foolish Mm -hmm. you know like something like you would believe Mm -hmm. that someone that is from royal blood Mm -hmm. that is from a good family Mm -hmm. you know on paper Mm -hmm. because paper is a physical thing that's a worldly element yeah on paper Mm -hmm. they should have the height of success Mm -hmm. So then why is it that some of those people crumble and fall? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. the people like the pastor mm-hmm. that was there today, mm-hmm. his parents couldn't read or write, mm-hmm. you know, which was a worldly thing mm-hmm. to establish, mm-hmm. you know, human um, human merit. Mm-hmm. You know, reading and writing is human merit. If you can't do that, they don't even, they wouldn't even consider you mm-hmm. to be even a human worth worthy of respect. Yeah. But that person is now preaching mm-hmm. Over multitudes of people. And not just in India, because that's a different case. Yeah. If you're just preaching in India, in your locality, that's different. Yeah. But he's he's in, a, he's in Europe, right? Wow. And he's ministering to people, and he's making people who've grown up in maybe more favorable conditions. Yeah. 
realize something about God, how is it? Wow. How is it? Shouldn't we be the ones that are in that position? Yeah. On paper. Yeah, because we have received, yeah, on paper, more favor. Yeah. More advantage. Yes. Right? But that's not how God thinks. Exactly. That's not how God thinks. Right? Right. So he says then, For you see your calling, brethren, that not many were wise according to the flesh. Not many mighty, not many noble are called. So if you're listening and you know that after the flesh you are not wise, mm. after the flesh you are not mighty, mm. after the flesh <coughs> you are not noble, mm. then I hope you're beginning to see that that's the very reason that he chose you. Mm. Those disqualifications are the very things that qualified you wow. before God. Those weaknesses that you carry and you struggle with is the very reason God wants you so bad. You get me? Mm. And he says, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise things. God is on a mission to send a message with your life that a person with your weakness, a person with your kind of disadvantage can still go ahead and overcome mm. and represent the power of God better than someone who chooses to stand on their own strength and on their own natural advantage. But, the, but God has chosen. You see, this is a deliberate decision of God. It's not chance. Mm. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise things. The wise things. And, and this is not godly wisdom we're talking about. This is worldly wisdom. Yes. Okay, so someone has gone to Harvard and they have learned all that they need to know about psychology. Mm -hmm. But you get someone, okay, from Africa who has not studied, right, giving you advice and giving you problems and giving you solutions to problems, some which you never knew you had, mm. without any formal education, mm. without any psychological training, mm -hmm. because it's not mind games. When we say that Jesus is the answer, it's true. When someone presents you the answer being Christ, whether you understand English or not, it will answer whatever problem or whatever question that you have. Right? Wow. Right? Wow, yes. And he says, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. The weak things, your weaknesses, yes. your weak spots, your disadvantages, whatever it is that you can think of that even you sometimes feels disqualifies you before God. <laughs> hmm. That is the very reason God has chosen you. Wow. So that that weakness can put to shame the things which are being purported to be mighty. Yes. Right. Do you understand? Yes. Do you understand? And he says, and the base things of the world. I like the word base there because it means the things that are at the bottom tier. Mm -hmm. The things that no one is picking. Yep. You know. There's nothing below. Yeah, there's the nothing. Base. You are at the base. You are at the bottom. <laughs> yes. There's nothing to seek for there. Yes. That is what God wants so that he can show. You know, there's this thing um, in the corporate world today called visibility. <laughs> mm-hmm. And there is this obsession with announcing your work. Mm. And it's not a bad thing, but I call it an obsession because people would go above and beyond to try and make sure that they are seen a certain way. Mm -hmm. Now, this may not be the truth about who they are, yeah, but they just want to be perceived that way perceived. in the hope that a promotion may come their mm. way in the hope that they might get noticed mm -hmm. by a certain someone somewhere. Mm. And so this obsession of people packaging themselves this way creates a lot of inauthenticity. Mm. And God's solution for you is this. Don't get into that bandwagon. Mm -hmm. don't, don't focus on fronting what doesn't exist. Exactly. You do your part and seek me. 
and watch me take the base things to shame the mighty things, mm. quote unquote mighty. Because sometimes you see that all these things are a facade. Yes. At the office, there's a lot of fronting. There's a yeah. lot of things that are not real. Yes. So if you get into that kind of competition as a believer, trying to compete with them in their own arena. In their domain. You're gonna you're not gonna succeed. No. And we, this is not a call for mediocrity. We're saying be excellent. Yes. But don't get into that rat race. Yes. In anything in life. You know, trying to get ahead yes. for the sake of getting ahead. Yes. Without wow. purpose. Key word. Yeah. Getting ahead for the sake of getting ahead. Mm -hmm. That's perceived mm -hmm. as getting ahead over somebody. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm only 22 years old mm -hmm. and look at my life. Mm -hmm. Perceived yeah. as great. Yeah. When it doesn't really matter. No. no. Wow. No. Wow. That spoke word. That spoke. Oof. <laughs> yeah. It's it's amazing. So God chose so now you can begin to see why God is so interested in you. That we are not denying you have weaknesses. We are not denying that you are not where you want to be. We are not denying that you ha you're a work in progress. But that's the very reason that Jesus came for you. Mm. And that's why he rejected the Pharisees because they thought they had it. Yes. They thought they knew it just because they could read the scriptures and no one else could. Mm. And Jesus told them that even in the scriptures you're looking for, they are pointing to me. Yeah. But they couldn't see the yeah. bigger picture. So I want you to know that that reason that God chose you, that reason that God selected you is not because you are the best. It mm. could be. Because you are not yes. the best. And he says, and the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not, oh my God, the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are. Now, let me say something there because the Bible calls God. He says, this is the God that calls the things which are not mm. as though they are. Yes. This is God's nature here. We're dealing with God's nature. So the moment that God sees Tunji is lacking financial grace, mm. then he selects him. Now, this is the man I want to be the richest man. Mm. The moment he sees a listener there who does not have the ability to speak before people, mm. he selects him like, come, I want you to be my preacher. Yes. The moment he sees you exhibiting a certain weakness wow. in a certain area, he calls you and he says, come, I want you to shine. Because he told Paul, where you are weak, it's that same place that you you're strong. strong. Can you believe it? Wow. So if you are to look at your life in God's eyes, your weaknesses are your areas of strength. If you're struggling with lust then you are called to disciple people to live self-controlled lives. Yes. Because that is your area of Expertise. strength. If wow. you're struggling with lies, God has called you to be an honest man or woman of God. Wow. If you're struggling with submission in your marriage, God has taught, has called you to teach women how to submit. <laughs> you know? Oh my goodness. If you're goodness. struggling with excellence, God has called you to be the most excellent because the base things are called to shame the mighty things. Yes. And I love that scripture. It says, and the things which are not. What areas in your life are not? What areas in your life are lacking? Mm. What areas in your life are missing? God says that he has chosen them to bring to, th to, to shame the things that are. And that means if there are people who you idolize because they possess qualities that you think you don't have and they are not of God, God is saying he has called you and elected you to bring out those things, to show people that even though they have those things, there is something better in you mm. because it is of God. Oof. Oof. That's heavy. And that just, the first thing that comes to my head is, a person is more likely going to listen to someone that has been through what they are going through mm -hmm. 
than someone that has not gone through what they're going through. Mm-hmm. How can you tell me? Yes, you might have a degree. You might even have a PhD in this area. Mm-hmm. But why should I listen to you over somebody that's struggling with what I have went through mm-hmm. and defeated it? Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know? And that's when you go back to the facade em- element. Mm-hmm. That piece of paper that says you are the highest qualification to provide this sort of information to mm-hmm. people, mm-hmm. you know? But it really doesn't mean anything. You can just tear that paper and you're now a nobody. Exactly. Again. Mm. But what's in within this spirit that has been stored within to give to others is where somebody will have a long-lasting effect. Mm. Mm. Because that can not, never be taken from you mm. and it can never be rendered meaningless. Mm. 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 Wow. Like a degree, cool. like a piece of paper, unlike the things, like the, qualifi- like the qualifications that man will give you. Mm-hmm. You're qualified for this because, you know, everybody here likes you. Mm-hmm. But this person here speaks the truth regardless yeah. of whether you like them or not. Mm, mm. Who are you going to listen to? Mm, mm. Are you going to go with this person here because they're liked? So y- you will seem like you're more liked because mm-hmm. you're in association, mm-hmm. which association also means nothing. Mm-hmm. As you can tell from the Sadducees, the Pharisees, all those people. Mm. But the people that were with Jesus, have all they all were killed Horrible deaths. Mm. We don't even know the names mm-hmm. of any Pharisees, no. any Sadducees, no. any of them. But we know the names of all, all the 12 disciples. disciples. Yeah. Yeah. And they were rendered at the base. Mm. 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 We remember those names 2,000 years yeah. later. And we quote them. Yeah. We quote them. Yeah. We don't remember the Pharisees. We don't remember the Sadducees. So just remember when you're listening. In life, the people that have the most impact are not those that are deemed qualified in the eyes of man. Mm-hmm. God chooses who he chooses. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <sighs> wow. Mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. And that just ties right back into the pastor mm. and how he was not qualified. No. On paper, he was the last person you would expect to be an international preacher Mm -hmm. he's not just a preacher in a local area he has taken this internationally Mm -hmm. the pastor met him our pastor met him in singapore that's far away from india Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. oh my goodness he is not qualified on paper but he was given that role where he was weak god made him strong Mm -hmm. you should take that principle into life with you. Mm. He bred life into the eyes of many people that were there. When he told us that that story, the parable that we thought he was giving, was a a memento of his life. That Mm. is powerful. Wow. 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 Hey. Hey. (laughs) Amazing. 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 Ah. And he says in verse 30, but of him... You are in Christ Jesus, who became for us the wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. And that it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. In other words, let your boasting be in God because you who have been chosen by him, the Bible says that, Christ Jesus has become wisdom for you from God. Mm. And he has become righteousness for you from God. And he has become sanctification for you from God. And he has become redemption for you from God. Wow. So your boasting is only valid if you're boasting in the fact that you have Christ. Mm. Because you could not have made the decision. He chose you. Mm. You did not choose him. Mm. So your boasting can only be, thank the Lord that I have Jesus in my life. Because in him, you get wisdom from God. Mm. In him, you get righteousness and sanctification and redemption from God. And you said something about degrees and education. (laughs) And there's a certain pun or plain words that I, I consider sometimes that when you get one degree, right, you have only one, but mm. there's 360 or 59 other degrees if you look at a degree as a perspective of life. Mm. 
So if you had a degree in business, yeah, you have one degree in mm-hmm. business, you have one perspective. Yeah. But there is 359 other perspectives mm. that you might not be able to get from school. Mm-hmm. 300 other perspectives, 359 other perspectives mm. that you can only get because who is going to get 360 degrees? Nobody. No. And I know what yet yeah, we're comparing maybe apples with mangoes because we're talking about education, but that's just to show you that science and knowledge is limited. Yes. Because we what are we told that science is a branch of knowledge. Yes. In the whole tree of knowledge, science is just a branch. There's so much more there is to know beyond what we call facts and figures. Mm. There are truths that are higher than facts. Mm-hmm. Because how do you explain God choosing the weak things to ashame the mighty things what formula is that there's no, you can't quantify the, what yeah what kind of equation adds up that way hmm. in this world there is nothing and so maybe in conclusion i don't know how much time we have acts chapter 14 chapter 4 verse 13 Listen to this of the disciples and he says now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John these are the disciples of Christ and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus so they looked at Peter and John and they looked at their boldness and that boldness that they had did not ma- did not add up because they perceived that they were uneducated and untrained but it only made sense when they realized mm-hmm. that these men had been with Jesus otherwise it does not make sense mm-hmm. for a person to be this bold this confident this knowledgeable this wise yet they don't have the training the qualification for it mm. there's only one explanation School. they had been with Jesus. And it's the same thing for you. They will only be able to explain you when they add Jesus to the equation. Mm. Your success won't make sense. Your growth won't make sense. Mm. Your wisdom won't make sense. Your trajectory in life will not make sense mm. because they will look at you and say, "Ah, this guy is uneducated, he's untrained, he's unqualified." Mm. and they will marvel and realize that it can only be Jesus. This is the choosing and the calling of God that he did not you did not choose him but he, he chose, chose you. you. That is just wow. This is why we need this podcast. Mm-hmm. Who listening to the sermon would have gotten this in-depth from that sermon mm-hmm. when they're listening to this here mm-hmm. it, it it this conversation has even given me a broader look at the thing that he was explaining mm-hmm. a different form a different perspective <sighs> wow this is just amazing mm. so for the people that are listening just know from what we spoke about today where you are weak god will make you strong mm-hmm. the things of this world can be explained with ones and zeros but the things of god cannot be explained through the lens of man wow amen divine intervention mm. oh my gosh it just goes back to the common theme that we mentioned at the beginning mm. It's almost as if in the Bible those that are lesser than are the ones that are put forward. Mm. So many stories of that mm. throughout the Bible. Oh my gosh. Okay guys. Thank you so so much for listening. I hope this truly helped you gain more perspective. I hope this has blessed you, blessed, you know, anybody. Please send this to other people. This is episode 2. of the solid rock podcast please listen to the sermons and we will catch you on the next one goodbye from me i see you have a good week have a good week bye